Carla, welcome to Birmingham City Women. Um, a great opportunity. You, you must be relishing it. Yeah, absolutely. I think as soon as sort of I left Sheffield United and I realised that this job was available, um, I think initially it was could I go there or um, obviously talks have only just just started in the last week. But no, it's something that is um, massive, massive opportunity for myself and someone I'm looking forward to. Obviously, the season is only a matter of weeks away. Um, are you going to have to assess the squad, strengthen, put a stamp on things? It's a bit of a challenge. A little one, yeah. <laughs> no, listen, there's no underestimating how big this big this job is. It's a, a massive football club. You know, the women have got great history and great heritage. So I think I, I said it, I've said it a few times, it's project survival and it's a case of um, getting everyone together, making sure that everyone's on the same page, pulling every single ounce out of everyone, um, including myself, and, and stretching everyone to try and make sure that we stay in the division. You mentioned there, in July, you parted company with Sheffield United. How big a decision was that, considering all that you'd help them achieve? Tough, yeah, um, because essentially, uh, you know, I love the football club when I work there, and I, and I still love the football club. It's a great club, um, but you know, it comes a time, I suppose, in every job that you want a fresh challenge, you want a fresh start, and you want to move on. And um, you know, I've got a, some great memories there, and um, but that's football. Football moves on, and it moves on quickly. So now it's a case of focusing on what's in what's in front of me and, and, and moving on. Mm -hmm. You helped Sheffield United gain that championship status. You were second in the league before lockdown came. Mm -hmm. um, you can obviously look back with pride on, on the achievements there. And what, what do you think you learned from the whole experience that you can bring now going into the career? Loads. I think I learned so much at Sheffield United. I think, you know, season one, I had to probably get out of the player mode and realise that I was a manager and not a player. Um, but, but everything, I think, you know, people, the championship is massively competitive and every single week it's, um, it's a cup final and it'll be no different here. It'll be even bigger, uh, bigger ch challenge here. But um, no, I've learned an awful lot and hopefully I can bring that through. As you mentioned, you've made that transition now from player to, to coach in the technical area. Um, how would you outline your traits? What sort of coach would you say you are? I'd like to think I was a people person uh, with a holistic approach. Um, it's very much right based around the player um, because I'm a big believer in, and particularly in my playing days, if, uh, if we've got the player smiling and confident and, and buying into what you're going to do, then then certainly you've got half a chance. And particularly now, with only a few weeks to go, that's going to be key. Um, so straight away, it's about getting the players um, together, united, and um, and kicking on. How do you like your teams to play? Um, what sort of cool <laughs> characteristics do you like from your players? Usually attacking football. Um, <laughs> no, listen, it's, um, yeah, everybody knows that I, I go out and I, I want to attack, 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 but equally, um, you know, you've got to assess the situation and I think this, this season will be a little bit different, make no bones about it, so um, we'll have to uh, turn that attack and maybe into a little bit more uh, defensive this year. But. Um, it's another challenge. It's, it's something that's going to stretch me as well as the players. So um, no, it'll be exciting, I'm sure. You've got a good staff behind you. You've been overseeing matters in pre-season already. I guess that's important in regards to the continuity aspect. I mean, we've all been here a while now and know the club, which yeah. will help you in turn coming in now. Absolutely, and, and the message to them will be, you know, what what can um, as much as. Uh, I'm coming in. This is about us as a collective, uh, every single member of staff. They know this club inside out, they know the players inside out, they know the WSL, uh, and these are things I don't. So um, I'll, I'll massively be relying on them um, and their knowledge in particular to, to try and kick on. It seems season on season that the, the WSL just gets stronger and stronger, more and more competitive. And um, what kind of test is this, this current campaign going to present? To, to yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's a massive test, and you know I keep going back to it. This is this is huge. Um, you know, this it's a big job for anybody. Um, it's, this will stretch me massively, but but it's a challenge that I'm looking forward to. I think the WSL in itself is, um, I look at it as potentially two, maybe three leagues within the league. Um, it's particularly in the money at the top end, but um, that that should you know we'll relish the challenge, and I think the players as well, and um, the girls that. That put the shirt on on the opening day will um, will relish that challenge. The, the squad has un, undergone a fair few personnel changes the last couple of couple of years, but there's also s still some very good players there, some very bright young talents coming through as well. Yeah, and uh, you look at the squad, and it is a young squad, but um, we'll do our best to bring in some experienced heads to to sort of help them and nurture them. But look, these are good quality players that um, that have showed that could play in this division last year. So it will be about working with them, developing them, and trying to kick on, and and obviously bringing in the older ones to help them too.
What's your immediate focus going to be on when, when you get on the, the training pitch with the girls in the next few days? I think we've got to set the scene, but listen, time's against us, so it's a case of uh, getting straight down to business and um, setting, setting the tone of exactly what we want from them. Um, and equally, allowing them an opportunity to, to tell us what um, I suppose what they maybe need, what they want, um, as well as us sort of directing, because I think it's, it needs to be a collective now and we need to get them straight away understanding that we're all in this together. This isn't about me coming in and doing things my way, this is about me coming in and, and helping what's already got good foundations, um, but getting everyone buying in and everyone fighting on the same page. And as you know, the, the fan base is a very passionate and knowledgeable one. What, what would your message to those supporters <laughs> be patient stick with us this is this is a project it's um, you know I've seen a lot in the press recently about uh, the, the state that the clubs in it's not um, you know there's a lot of positives to take so it's a case of stick with us um, be patient we're on a journey and we need them because you know it's, like I said before it's a massive fan base here and and um, I think every single player I can assure you that that put that jersey on on day one um, we'll, we'll make sure we get every ounce out of them. So my my message is stick with us, um, get behind the girls, get behind us, and um, and come along with us.